Well, once again, today's gospel greatly challenged each one of us. They say if you want to make people really uncomfortable, then question their use of money and possessions. And you know what? Jesus does that a lot. And he is no hypocrite because, as we know, he lived a poor life. He said birds of the air have, have, have nests and foxes have dens, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. So he was one that lived what he taught. And these words can be very challenging to us if we actually take them in. But one of the things that we can do to try to understand the way that Jesus intends these words is to think about eternity and think about the noble purpose of our life. And to think about these words that Fulton Sheen once said, he said, we are to love people and use things because we get into trouble when we use people and love things. I want to just spend a little time thinking about that. We are to love people, right? The, the human person, the only proper response is love. Jesus tells us this. We must love one another. We must love our neighbor as ourself. This is the only proper way that we should relate to one another is out of love. And the things that we have, the possessions, all of the, the material goods that we obtain, these are all meant to be used. They're used to accomplish the end of our life, which is, as we hear in the, cate- the Baltimore Catechism, you know, to know, love, and serve God in this life and to be happy him- with him forever in the next. Everything that we have, all the goods, all the materials, everything is to help us to attain that very end. And we get into trouble when we do the opposite, which is to love things and to use people. Because when we love things, they, they're never enough. We can never have a large enough house to satisfy our desires. We can never have a, a successful enough business to satisfy our desires because more than that. And so we should never love things because those things will always betray us and in the end, we will have to leave them to someone else. And we should not use others Using others is the opposite of love. It means when we treat people like objects instead of subjects, and this is done in many different ways, whether we exploit them for our own material benefit or if we use them for impurity, all of these things objectify people and amount to using them. So we should love people and use things, not use people and love things. And the way that we can help to understand this better is by using the method that Jesus used in today's gospel. He told that parable about the rich fool who built larger barns. And what happened? God said to him, this night your life will be required of you. And so to help us to love people and to use things properly, we need to continue to think about death, as hard as that is, because... When we die, the things of this world will leave us or we will leave them. The only things that we take with us into the next life are the virtues that we have acquired and the merits that we have stored up in heaven, the riches that we have laid up in eternity. And so this is something that we should think about and it has made many people into saints. And so I just wanna share finally a story about St. Francis Borgia. He lived in Spain during 1500s and he was from a noble family actually believe it or not he was a great grandson of a pope now how that happens um, is another story Uh, and he was he became very important and he was he was in the court of the the queen of Spain you know he was one of the people that helped her out but uh, her name was Isabella and at one point um, she died And it was his job to take her body from where she died to the place where she would be buried. And as they were traveling along, you know, he opened the casket and he looked in and he saw what becomes of the queens of this earth. And he realized that everything, all the goods of this world will leave us. You know, you can be the queen of Spain, you can be the queen of the world, and all these things will go away when you die. And he said, the grandeur and the, the goods of this world are nothing. And so he, he decided right then, 
I will serve a master who will never die. And that master is Jesus, and he became a Jesuit priest and a very important saint. So we can um, imitate St. Francis Borgian and think about how the goods of this world will one day leave us, and we should focus on the important things. So once again, we need to love people and use things, not use people and love things. And finally, finally, um, the bishop requested that we play a, a little three-minute thing about value them both. Um, but the audio is very bad when I try to play it, so I'm going to try to summarize it in my own words very poorly and with all, um, you know, with uh, apologies to the bishop. So, as, as, you, as you know, the eyes of the entire nation are now on the state of Kansas, and there's lots of money being poured into the state to um, oppose the constitutional amendment that we have up for vote in the next couple of days. And so the important thing to take away is that every vote matters, and we need to get out and cast our vote and make our voices heard. You know, of course, abortion is one of the greatest evils of our time, and it's a great source of suffering for many people. And we need to pray for and love people who have suffered from this. And um, we need to also protect others from this. And that's why it's so important. In the opinion letter to the editor of the local paper, and I put it in the bulletin a few weeks back, I compared abortion to slavery. And there is a great comparison because in both cases, there was a certain group of people who were denied their rights. And um, in this case, it is the unborn person's rights that are being denied. And this is the greatest civil rights issue of our day and something that we cannot ignore as Catholics. It is something that we have to, to um, work against. And so um, many people, there can be disagreements on how this happens. But in our state, um, it seems like this is the best path forward to write a constitutional amendment and then on August 3rd to start the work of passing laws that will protect the unborn. And so this is just the beginning. It's not the end. And um, even if it's not successful, we will continue to, to carry out our efforts to um, build a culture of life in our state and in our country. And it's important to remember the words of Mother Teresa. You know, she was that great pro-life advocate everywhere she went. They told her, please do not talk about these subjects. And she was like this tall, you know, and she'd walk up to like a step stool for her. And, she'd, and she would go on and say what she felt because she knew how important this was. But she taught us something that's very important. God did not put us in this world to be successful. He got, put us here to be faithful. And so we ought to strive to be faithful as we approach this important vote. And finally, the bishop said, of course, the most important weapons that we have are prayer. The best of all prayers is the holy sacrifice of the Mass, which we are offering today. And the second most important prayer is you know, praying the Holy Rosary. So he asks us that we all do that. And he asks that we have a holy hour tomorrow night. So at tomorrow night at 7 p.m., if you'd like to join us, we will have Eucharistic adoration and prayers um, for the passage of this amendment. So um, that is essentially what the bishop said, but in better words. So um, please take um, his, his words to heart and, um, and let's do what we, you know, our consciences advise us to do.